Hi guys, today I'm going to talk about how I became a contractor. I have a cold this week and the last couple of videos were a bit high maintenance. Today I'm just going to do a quick vlog about how I became a self-employed project manager. A contracting project manager is, well, like a normal project manager, working for similar companies on similar projects as normal employed project managers who have a job contract that's a sort of continuation, goes on forever until you resign or get fired or whatever. A contractor, on the other hand, has a six month, 12 month or maybe three month contract with the employer. And it's usually via um, a company, an intermediary. This can be their own company. So I work via my Sorrel Gilbert Project Solutions Limited. Other people will work via third party companies who are usually called umbrellas. The day to day work is basically the same as a normal project manager, but I get paid by the day or by the hour instead of as a salary. So my pay changes depending on how much I work. I also have to do my own taxes, my own uh, pension. See, I don't have one, like, I've forgotten what they were called. It's all a bit different, but you get the flexibility of being able to move roles. I'd always liked the idea of doing it. I wanted to become a solid project manager and then move around projects to grow and learn from different companies and from different projects. And I got to the end of my three year project management apprenticeship. There was the option to stay for two more years and get a bachelor's degree. And I already had a maths degree at this point. I just couldn't face two more years of uni. I also wasn't overly enthused by the roles being offered to me. I did my apprenticeship in a very small part of BA systems that didn't have that many different projects. They were massive projects. They were the aircraft carrier, stuff like that. But I'd moved around most of the projects already. I knew I wasn't gonna get any jobs in sort of business winning. Um, and I wasn't overly interested in that. I wanted some solid delivery projects, which I'd already worked on and that's not the sort of work that part of the business did. I got offered a job and it was a good job. I think I would have taken it if the job I ended up taking hadn't come along. And actually, I was happy to take a lower salary than some of the jobs I was applying for to stay with BAE because I knew them, I knew the job was a good one, it had prospects, all that stuff. So I think we need to roll back a bit. I finished my three year apprenticeship, I knew I was passing, I'd done all my exams, and it got to the December and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna start just going to apply for some jobs. I'd always said when I finished my apprenticeship I wanted to apply for jobs because you need to know where you are in the world. There is a massive difference in applying for jobs when you're 18 with no skills really to applying for jobs when you've finished an apprenticeship. You're actually a proper employee then with three years solid business experience and I was obviously a little bit older and had, how old was I, 26. So I'd been out of school for eight years I'd been doing work for eight years and I just didn't know what I was worth. So I applied around, I looked at companies I was interested in and looked for any relevant jobs. I also went on indeed.com and basically applied for any job that said project manager. This then got me in contact with recruiters. Now, some people see recruiters as a dirty word, but personally, I've mostly had a good relationship with recruiters. So I started applying um, in places like indeed.com and that is the place, Indeed and Read and Jobsite, were the places where I got in touch with recruiters. Now recruiters, I have found, are basically the only way to get in there with contracts. Until you get to the stage where you have your own contacts within companies who can kind of headhunt you in, you need recruiters. Um, the ones that I've used with success are Experis and Mawson. There are loads of other ones, um, so they're not the only ones. They helped me with BAE systems and with Talis and in the defence industry. So that's the thing, they'll have different recruiters who specialise in different industries. So I went for interviews. Now, the difference between applying to be a contractor and applying to be a member of staff is they usually don't put as many steps in the recruitment process. So for any contractor role I've gone for, the longest I've had is maybe an hour's interview, the shortest is a phone interview, but they already knew me by reputation um, and I'd worked with people who were already on the project. So they'd obviously decided that um, as people knew me, they knew I was already a competent-ish project manager. So that was partly why I became a contractor, was because it was the first job offered to me. And 
In hindsight, maybe that wasn't the right decision to just say yes to the first job offered to me, other than the BA job which was offered to me. Um, I applied, a couple of days later I had an interview, the next, oh I remember this, so I had the interview, I don't know, like four o'clock in the afternoon, next day, five past eight, got an email saying, they've said yes, and they've said yes to your salary. Yay! That was how quick it was. The slowing down part there was, it was just before Christmas, so we said first of January, and obviously I needed to finish my apprenticeship. Um, and also transferring the clearance and security clearances uh, for the industry I work in. I got offered the role. So I then had, I don't know, it was two or three weeks to set myself up as a contractor. This included setting up my company. I actually ended up paying someone to do this. In hindsight, I regret that because actually it's really easy to do. So I paid a couple hundred quid, someone set up my company, putting the name in company's house, all the incorporation papers, and got them all sent to me. Uh, my accountants that I went with, they... They were a sort of all-inclusive accountants, so they included my business address was at their accountancy address, rather than being my house. I now use a third-party service who all they do is business addresses, and they'll email me uh, scans of my post. Your business's address is public, and obviously a lot of people don't want their home address public, so that's why you pay for a service for your business address to be there. Once I've done the business address, uh, my accountant set up all sorts of things to do with tax, including VAT, because when you're a contractor you have to pay VAT. Um, that also means you charge VAT, and it means you can take VAT off your expenses um, and claim it back from the stuff you charge. It's, I'll do another video explaining how all that works. The recruitment process was really quick. Um, I also had to set up... Um, I also had to set up my insurance, uh, I think that's it really. Back to the interview, I haven't talked about what actually went on in the interview. The interview is basically the same as any other interview. They talked about project management, checked that I knew about project management, they asked about the projects I'd been on, they talked about, they explained the project that I would be working on. This is something that I think is key. If you're in an interview and they don't really explain what project you're going to be working for, I see that as a red flag because any good company should want you to understand what you're letting yourself in for and self-select if it's not quite right for you. Um, I actually think a good amount of the interview should be them explaining to you about your new job, especially in a professional job. If you're going to work in a shop, it's a little bit different because everyone knows what goes on in a shop. You can actually go and stand in the shop and watch it. Especially in project management, things like assistant project manager in my controversial video. Um, an assistant project manager can mean lots of different things, um, so they need to explain exactly what they mean by it and on what bits of the project you'll be working on and how and what processes and the culture and all those sort of things need to be included. Um, yeah. The interview's never been longer than an hour, and then you usually hear back quite quickly. If you don't get it, you don't get it. It's all fine. Um, so I think some of it... I just went into contracting because I was a bit surprised. Um, it also... It had been on my longer-term plan. I didn't think it was something I'd do so soon. Um, but I wanted to explore. I wanted to look around the different projects and the different companies and work out what I enjoyed. Um, at the moment, I'm working a lot on business winning, and that was what I was avoiding when I left my apprenticeship. Oh, it's got really sunny. And I think that's it really. Let me know if you're interested in a video about more about my experiences as a contractor, especially as a young and female contractor, which is pretty rare. Comment below, are you a contractor? How have you found it? Um, also, if you're interested in more information on becoming a contractor, again, ask me and I will make a video about that one. Uh, Thanks for watching, and I have something more interesting um, planned for next week. And hopefully I won't have a cold. Bye!